Well, why must right. we be other people? I, I, we can I, be ourselves. Why must you wear that vest? Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I disagree with Elon Musk and, and Stephen Hawking. Uh, I, I have no fear of artificial intelligence. Because we, we're already exposed to artificial intelligence. Sure. A computer beat us at chess. A right. game we invented, we put our best chess player, the computer smoked him, all right? We, our computer, our best Jeopardy player got smoked by another computer, okay? <laughs> and so, did, did, was that the end of civilization? Did people say, oh my gosh, no. what will happen to us? And this but, has been going on since the Industrial Revolution. Well, but we have machines replacing our body. Computers replacing our mind. We've been doing it ever since the beginning. But, <laughs> But you're cherry picking an easy example, the chess game. I mean, come on, that that uh, holds no threat to us. But there are other things that would. The thing about chess is that it's a domain which is very carefully defined, and and it's much more difficult to have an artificial intelligence which can handle anything you throw at it, anything in real life. But uh, it, it will come, I'm sure. Let me ask you, Richard. Can uh, with artificial intelligence mimicking the human mind. We have a lot of neurological baggage from our evolutionary past. Is that baggage, which most of the time is not functioning rationally or logically, is that the source of our creativity? And if that's the case, now you program a computer as complex as ever you do, but it's still according to a prescribed code. So can a computer ever be as inventive as a human being? You could build in a certain random element. I mean, that would, that would do it if, if it was filtered through. You have to program it. in the randomness. Yeah, yeah. It, but, but ra randomness filtered through some interesting um, circuitry but, could, could come out as imaginative curiosity. Yeah. You guys ought to do a buddy cop movie. <laughs> <laughs> you solve crime, Mr. <laughs> and the problems of the universe. Right. <laughs> what uh, is currently the most exciting area of scientific development? Um, the origin of life is something we don't know anything about, and we want to know something about it. And uh, I would love to know how life actually got started. The, the origin of the first self-replicating entity. I'm not a biologist, and that's my top three things as well. Okay. Just how do you go from organic molecules to right. self-replicating life? That happened in the early Earth, and it happened relatively quickly. Very shortly after it could have possibly happened, yeah. it happened. Um, maybe this has been brought up before, but Lightning hit it? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, that was a... Have you guys thought of that? That right. meteorites contain th right. those very same organic right. mo molecules which, which Miller made by, right. his, by yeah. his lightning strikes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so that you get them for free, but right. it's still just organic so, chemistry. Right, yeah. At the end of the day, you want to have self-replicating life. And that's a mystery. Also, we don't know what was around before the Big Bang. That's kind of fun. We have some ideas, maybe a multiverse, and with one of multiple bubbles of universes coming in and out of existence. Mm. We didn't just pull that out of an orifice. That's a cogent uh, uh, extrapolation of the marriage of quantum physics and relativity. Also, is there life elsewhere in the universe, especially in our backyard, like in the subsurface soils of Mars? I, I got a good question for you. What's that? My question, because uh, interstellar, yeah. You saw that one? Yeah, of course. Okay. But Matthew McConaughey was really not that credible as a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, it was still like... <laughs> we, have to, we have to go through the black hole. All right, all right. <laughs> but, but, I, I, <laughs> but here's my question. Because, I mean, the reason why they have to find a new place to live is because there's a horrible drought on Earth. Mm -hmm, Nothing's mm -hmm. growing anymore. Yeah. And we've had a horrible drought here in California. Mm -hmm. And I look at it and, you know, we don't really know when the tipping point for global warming is gonna mm -hmm. get to that point where maybe California is the whole world. So if that happens... Uh, now here's the problem. If you find another planet, yeah. any planets we have any record of, they're very unlike Earth. So you're gonna have to learn how to terraform other planets, mm. turn them into something like Earth. Yeah. And then you have to ship a billion people there. Oh. This is, so, so Stephen Hawking wants us to be a multi-planet species so that one, the species doesn't go extinct by something bad happening in one place. My rebuttal to that is, if you have the power to turn another planet into Earth, then you have the power to turn Earth back into Earth. Yeah. Thank you very much, really.